in the Bible, in Acts chapter 20, Paul tells us, By everything I did, I showed you how you should work to help everyone who is weak. Remembering that our Lord Jesus said, More blessings come from giving than from receiving. You probably know the saying is, It's more blessed to give than to receive. And you can tell that Paul, when he said this, was closer to 50 than he was to five because no five-year-old ever said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Tomorrow's Halloween. How many five-year-olds do you know that said, I don't want to go trick-or-treating and get candy. I just want to stay at home and give it to others. After all, Jesus said, it's better to give than to receive. Not many of them. I know I didn't think that way when I was young. Halloween was the one time to get more candy than mom or dad would ever allow us at any other time of the year. When I was little, I carried this uh, orange plastic pumpkin to, to collect my treats in. But as I got a little older, that was way too small. And so we, we graduated to pillowcases. Any, any of you pillowcase people? Yeah. You can collect an ungodly amount of candy in a pillowcase. And that's exactly what we were after. We hit every house within a five-block radius. But one year, we heard a rumor that a house on the edge of town was giving away more than suckers and sweet tarts and candy bars. They were giving away full-size bottles of Gatorade. Which may not sound like much today. You know, you can pick it up at any gas station. But back then, none of us had even seen a bottle of Gatorade, let alone drank one. The, the owner of the house was a Minnesota Viking football player. And he had gotten this special drink that the football players were using called Gatorade. And he was giving it away to those who stop by to trick or treat. Well, we decided we would make the two mile round trip to go there. And we passed by many, many houses because we couldn't stop to trick or treat along the way. Even so, by the time we got there, the porch light was off and the Gatorade was gone. And we were disappointed to say the least especially since that, that little trip had cost us a full hour of getting candy. <laughs> and when you were five or even 15, it's all about the getting, especially on Halloween. But that's why I'm glad that, that I learned the truth that Jesus taught. There are more blessings in giving than in receiving. Even at that age, my parents were, were trying to tell me about the kind of generosity that Jesus talks about. And our church was too. Sunday school was teaching us the, the blessing of giving. In Sunday school at this time of year, they passed out little cardboard boxes to collect money for UNICEF, the United Nations International Children's Fund. Ever trick-or-treat for UNICEF? Any of you or have your kids trick-or-treat? You might remember these, these boxes. Now, of course, we didn't do that in place of trick-or-treating. We, we did both. Still, yeah, we did also do that kind of work of giving. Also in our Sunday school, we had a little plastic church-shaped bank. And in, the, in that Sunday school, the, the tradition was that on your birthday, you got to put in as many pennies as you were years old. So if you were five, you got to put in five pennies on your birthday to give to the church. And if you were 10, you got to put in 10 pennies. And as you put them in, everybody would count with you and celebrate. And you couldn't wait to turn another year older so you could give more of your pennies to the Lord's work. But enough about me. I want to tell you today about the day that Jesus watched someone giving their pennies to the Lord. 
and he taught a lesson on generosity. So here's how Mark describes that day. It's in the 12th chapter. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offering were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. The story is known as the widow's might. The story of the widow's might, because in the King James Version of the Bible, it uses that name to describe the two small copper coins that Jesus saw the woman put in. It says that she gave two mites. And back in the 1600s, a mite was worth an eighth of a penny. It's the least amount of money that you could have and still have something, have anything. For us today, that coin would be the penny. It's our smallest But the actual coin that the woman put in was neither a mite nor a penny. The actual coin that she put in was a lepton. It was the smallest coin in Jesus' day. And I happen to have a, a lepton from the time of Jesus myself, an authentic lepton. But I didn't bring it because you wouldn't be able to see it because it's about that big. Uh, Dan found a picture of, uh, of one compared to a penny here. You can see how tiny it is. The woman put in two of those. And Jesus says that she gave more than all the people putting their silver and gold coins into the temple collection. Now why is that? It's because generosity depends not so much on what you have to give, but on your desire to give what you have. Generosity depends not so much on what you have to give, but on your desire to give what you have. Those rich people who gave their big donations to God's work in the temple did a good thing. Without them, the temple would not have been able to provide for worship or help the needy or support the priests or even keep the building going for people to come and connect with God. Those rich givers did a good thing. But they also gave out of their wealth, out of their abundance, they gave what they had left over after they had taken care of all their own wants and needs. They did a good thing. But did they know the blessing of generosity? Like that woman with the two mites? Do you know who Mackenzie Scott is? You know who? She, she's the billionaire ex-wife of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. Last month, she donated two of her Beverly Hill houses to a, a nonprofit to help fund affordable housing. And those two little spare houses that she donated were worth $55 million. That's quite a gift. But Mackenzie Scott is worth $38,000 million. To shrink it down to a number we can understand, if you had $38,000 sitting here, and you donated 55, how generous would you be? Do you think you'd experience the blessing of generosity that Jesus talks about in the same way that that widow who didn't even have $55 but gave what she had to the Lord? Jesus says she gave more than all the rest because she gave everything. And in turn, I bet she felt more blessed to give her two leptons than those who gave what they had left over, even though their offering was a whole lot bigger. Five-year-old me started to learn that lesson when I was blessed to be able to put five pennies in the little church bank on my birthday. Say, so did you know that almost 40% of the United Methodist Church lives in Africa? And while we in America lament that people don't go to church like they used to. In Africa, the churches are exploding. P 
People walk for miles to worship the Lord. They thirst for hearing God's word and pray with deep, expectant faith. And they know the blessing of generosity. One woman I heard said that for her church, giving was one of the highlights of the worship. There's no boxes at the back like we have. There were no plates or baskets being passed. No, in her church, the people came forward to the altar in a great procession, boldly and joyously giving their gifts to God. And she says, it's the best part of worship because they're able to join in in God's work in this way. They know that generosity depends not so much on what you have, but on your desire to give what you have. And they had something. And they felt so blessed to be able to give it for God's work. They know it's more blessed to give than to receive. I first learned that by collecting for UNICEF and giving my birthday pennies to the church. But, but I really learned it when I got married. Up until then, I, I would say that I was more of a, a tipper than a tither to God. I mean, I never let the, the plate go past without putting something in, but it was usually the smallest denomination I had in my wallet. And God forbid I should only have a 20. You usually didn't have to worry about that because uh, I rarely had a 20 back then. Still, when we got married, we had to have the talk, the money talk. How are we going to, to use what we have what is going to be our priority? What kind of family did we want to be? And we decided that we wanted to be a family who put God's work first. We wanted to plant generously. Now, like the widow Jesus observed on that day, we didn't have two leptons to rub together. You know, it was... Uh, Back in a time when our kitchen table was a plastic cooler and uh, our bed we got from Goodwill and the highlight of our week was when we splurged on a box of Jiffy cornmeal muffin mix. I looked up the price of that today. 47 cents at Walmart, even today. So you know what it cost back then. And that was a splurge for us. Still, we agreed that we were going to tithe we were going to give 10% to the Lord's work, and we never regretted it. And soon we were giving above and beyond a tithe, and we never looked back. Because it is more blessed to give than to receive. And even when times were hard and we didn't know how we were going to be able to pay the bills, we have always been blessed to be able to be generous in our giving to the Lord. The Apostle Paul tells the, the Corinthians... Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. We have a generous God. And what a privilege it is to be able to be generous in return. Even if what that is to you is two coins, smaller than a penny. The widow at the temple understood that. What joy she must have felt. That's why Jesus says that she was more generous than all the rest. Because generosity depends not so much on what you have to give, but on your desire to give what you have. Now, if you've been around the church for a while, you know it's that time of year. It's the time of year that Kim normally steps up to the front uh, and talks and says, it's stewardship time. Now, stewardship is one of those churchy words. Uh, we have a lot of those, but it's really quite simple. Stewardship comes from the word steward, which is someone who manages someone else's stuff for him. And all that we have is ultimately God's. 
So thinking about how we're going to use what we have for God's purposes, including our money, well, that's stewardship. But we could just as well call it generosity time. A time to think about what's going to be our priority in our lives. A time to ponder about what kind of family we want to be in this coming year. This is the time that we think about generosity. How generous do we want to be? And especially how generous do we want to be towards the Lord's work in this coming year? Tammy and I give to many different things. Some generously and others it's more like a tip. At, at Halloween, if you come to our house, you're going to get a fun-sized candy bar, not a full-sized candy bar. And there is no bottles of Gatorade to give out. But when it comes to God, we make it a priority. Our priority is the Lord and the Lord's church. Specifically, this one, resurrection. Because it's the church that we're blessed with right now. Because I believe in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in what we're doing here. Our witness for Christ in the Hastings community and beyond, whether it be cleaning the highway, collecting flood buckets, ministering to youth, all that we do, I believe in that. I believe in you. I believe in how you live out your faith in the world because you are the church. Yes, we have a building and that costs money. We all know those things. But you are the church and I believe in you, the ministry that you do because God has spoken to your heart here. And I believe it's worth investing in. I believe it's God is worth investing in. At least the, the woman at the temple that day thought so. She gladly and joyously gave her two leptons to the Lord. Because the Lord has given us everything, really. And I'm not just talking about our money or the food that we have, but God has given us everything, his very self. He's given us Jesus, who gave his life on a cross for our, for our sake. And if anyone who knows about, if anyone knows about generosity, it's Jesus. Because he truly gave it all. Even more than the woman and her two leptons. Jesus gave his very life for us. He understands. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for what you do through this church. And I'm thankful for what Jesus has done for all of us. Well, this week uh, I would encourage you to think about, about generosity and, and how you want to, to share in the Lord's work. We do have these cards in the, um, in the bulletins. If you're worshiping at home, don't worry, because you'll get one mailed, uh, at least if we have your address. And uh, next Sunday you can bring it to church or you can, uh, you can mail it in uh, as we, uh, we look for these responses. But uh, whatever you do this week, think about generosity. Think about the Lord's generosity and, and how generous you want to be. And uh, if you decide that that means uh, giving away a full-size bottle of Gatorade to trick-or-treaters, well, then uh, you just may see a really old trick-or-treater stop by. Because as much as I know it's more blessed to give than receive, my inner five-year-old is still upset that he didn't get his Gatorade. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you. These are, um, these are times to, to show our, our love for God and, and for each other. And I'm grateful. Let's pray. Lord, you're the very definition of generous because you gave it all. You gave your life for us so that we could live. Lord, we are privileged to be able to, to in some small way follow in your footsteps and give of our life to others. Whether it be service we do out on the street, whether it be things that we send to hurricane victims or, or whether it be the support of the ministries of the church through our, through our pledges and offerings. Lord, 
in just a little way, we get to practice being generous like you. We will never know the, the complete joy of, of your generosity because it overwhelms us. We can't even conceive of it. That the God of all creation would humble himself and give himself for us so that we might live, even us sinners. So thank you, Jesus. We thank you so much. Amen. Mm-hmm.